radar was one of the key developments of the Second World War. Although both the Germans and the Western Allies carried out extensive research on radar development, it was the British who had the upper hand in this arena. German radar was primitive in comparison to the Allied counterpart. Although radar had been installed on German surface warships from 1937, they were low-powered and had low frequencies, which limited their range and sensitivity. The first proposal for an U-boat radar was placed as early as 1939. In the summer of that year, there were plans to test radar equipment on board German U-boats, but due to the lack of space for the equipment, they were never conducted. In 1940, the German Navy returned to the concept of radar on U-boats. An order was placed for radar equipment small enough to fit inside the crowded U-boat pressure hull. From the middle of 1941, for tactical reasons, the U-boats were no longer fitted with active sonar equipment. It was decided that the free space would be used for the radar set. Installation of the first radar set, the FUMO-29, began in 1942. Its characteristics feature was its antenna, which consisted of 12 dipoles located in two horizontal rows on the forward part of the Cunning Tower's casing. The upper row consisted of receiving dipoles, the lower transmitting ones. The first U-boats which were fitted with this radar were the Type 9C boat U156, 157, and 158. The FUMO-29 had a detection range for surface vessels of 7,500 meters and for aircraft 15,000 meters. The main disadvantage of this radar was caused by its antenna. Its detection angle was limited to 25 degrees, which resulted in the boat having to make a complete turn to search the whole horizon. So early in 1943, the FUMO-30 radars entered service. This version differed from a FUMO-29 in that its antenna now consisted of eight vertical, central-fed, half-wave diapers, which were arranged in two horizontal rows. Wire mesh 1.4 meters wide and 1 meter high that acted as a reflector was located behind the dipoles. This antenna was mounted on the top of a rotatable shaft located on the port side of the bridge. When unused, it was lowered into a dedicated recess in the cunning tower casing. The antenna was raised by means of a pneumatic piston, similar to the radio direction finder antenna. The electronic equipment of the FUMO-29 and 30 radars was the same. Due to its size, it could not be placed in the radio room, so it was installed in the control room, on the port side, near the antenna shaft. The antenna shaft had a hand wheel connected to it, by which the radar operator manually rotated the antenna. FUMO-30 radar was installed on German U-boats until the very end of the war. There is little that can be said about the efficiency of the FUMO-29 and 30 radars. The captain of U-172 which was equipped with a FUMO-30 reported during the 5th patrol that the radar was simply useless. But, to evaluate the usefulness of these radars, you would need to review all the boats that had them. 
The next radar set commonly installed in U-boats was the FUMO 61 Hohentwil U. It was a modification of the aircraft radar FUG 200 developed and manufactured by the Lorenz company. The FUMO 61 head detection range for surface vessels was 7000 meters and 20,000 meters for aircraft. From March to September of 1944, 64 U-boats were fitted with this radar set. The antenna of the FUMO 61 consisted of 24 vertical and fed half-wave dipoles arranged in four horizontal rows. Behind the dipoles was wire mesh 1.4 meters wide and 1 meter high, which acted as a reflector. This antenna was mounted on the top of a rotatable shaft located on the port side of the bridge. When unused, it was lowered into a dedicated recess in the cunning tower casing. The antenna was raised by means of a pneumatic piston similar to the radio direction finder antenna of the FUMO 30. Because of the electronic equipment was quite small compared to the earlier models, it could be located inside the radio room. To make it possible for the radar operator sitting in the radio room to rotate the antenna, there was a flexible shaft with a hand wheel which connected the radio room to the antenna shaft. The attitude of U-boat commanders toward the operational use of radar affected the frequency of its use. From the time radar was first available on board U-boats, so from the end of 1941 to the middle of 1943, they were not used in any significant way. This was caused mainly by concern that Allied aircraft and surface warships were equipped with radar detectors which could easily locate the U-boats. Moreover, the aircraft with its radar turned on could be detected from a greater distance by means of their own radar detector than by means of their own radar. Additionally, a high failure rate and imperfections of the first radars, the FUMO 29 and 30, did not tend to encourage its usage. Despite all of this, from the middle of 1943, the German Navy started to encourage the operational use of radar sets. Quote, Our own radar sets are well suited to establish the presence of airplanes independently of their use of radar. For example, during surface cruise altitudes of 500 meters and more at a distance of 10 kilometers at the least." End quote. In March of 1944, the reluctance of the commanders was suppressed to some degree. There were more and more reports of successful usage of the radar. By means of radar, the aircraft were detected so early that they could be evaded before they could attack. The radar was also used to shadow vessels, to control anti-aircraft fire and to conduct torpedo attacks with the help of an accurate distance measurement. The Hohentwil radar was also used as a navigation aid during bad weather. So it seems that when U-boats were forced to stay permanently submerged, Radar was on the decline. There were less and less occasions for successful usage. Also, the height of the antenna had a significant impact on the radar's range, just like with visual observation. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.